What's up guys? Welcome back to Surveying with Robert. So um, if you guys were following my Instagram and my um, Facebook page, Surveying with Robert, uh, you guys probably saw that Friday I took some uh, pictures of some scanning we were doing. It was raining and uh, we were using SX-10 and we were scanning this um, boat lift with this boat in it. So there's some encroachment issues going on. The surveyor was uh, contracted to locate um, this this structure, this boat lift, uh, because it's, uh, uh, apparently they believe that not only was it not built in the right place, but also that it's built bigger than it's supposed to be. So the idea was to go out there and tie in the pilings and um, see it, you know, what the structure looked like. And I was like, dude, we we'll take the SX-10 out. It'd be a great time for me to show you. And I said, I can also show my YouTube guys um, some data with an SX-10. So I thought that that would be a good thing to do today. So uh, we're going to look at um, the data on the data collector and we're going to look at the data on the computer. Uh, some things I want to tell you about. I've got this thing, TDC 600, Trimble sent me. Uh, I'm going to review this uh, hopefully today, tomorrow. And we're going to look and see if this is an, an option. I think most of you probably remember the old T41 or the slate, I think they call it. Boy, these things were junk as far as I'm concerned. And people that purchase these have nothing but problems out of them. At least my customers, you guys. So let's see if this thing's any better, right? So another thing, uh, I got this from the office from, from uh, Lane Cook. He got this from um, ServPro, Serve what? Um, anyways, we'll look at all that later, uh, who all it's from and everything, but I'm going to review this as well. This is a TSE 7 bracket. Um, this is kind of interesting to me because I'm not real crazy about that Trimble bracket. So um, we're going to check this out. So before we get started, first things first. Okay, first thing we gotta do this morning is uh, get a drink of coffee. Mm. Get my motor in. <laughs> okay, so I've got on the data collector here. <coughs> I have the, um, the scan data. You can see I've got it in uh, color coded intensity. Now, on the data collector, if you go in and look, I always hit the wrong button, down here to settings and you scroll down to the bottom, you're gonna see point cloud color mode. So in here, you can change the color of the point cloud. So I could go to scan color and I can change the point cloud size. So I can change um, the um, uh, the size of the points if I, if I need to see something more dense. But so the idea behind being able to see it here on the data collector, and you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, I've got that, um, button click that lets me rotate this thing around. So it's called an orbit button. Um, so being able to see the, the scan on the data collector lets me see if I've got any holes, right? If I've got any shadowing, anything I need to pick up. We kind of overkill this thing, but uh, I wanted to make sure that we got enough information if they wanted to model it or something, that they would have plenty of data to be able to do that. So we, we kind of overkilled it, but um, Honestly, I'm glad we did, uh, even though it was raining all day. I got soaking wet. Uh, that was kind of miserable. But surveyor needed the data. Um, it's kind of an interesting story, but um, let's let's look at what we've got here. So what we're going to do, um, first thing is we need to get the data off of it. So let's, uh, let's go and use my handy dandy cable here. So if you guys remember this, I'll put a card up above. Uh, link to the video for this, but this is the cable that I use to transfer data from the data collector to the computer. It's old school. It's just a data transfer cable. You can get them at Best Buy, you get them off Amazon, whatever. Um, if you bought it off Amazon, I actually get a couple bucks, which helps support all this crazy stuff that I got going on. Um, so uh, let's plug this into here. 
So when you plug it in, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that like down here in the lower right, it pops up. It says run um, this easy suite. So I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna run it. It's gonna ask me if I wanna be sure. Yep. So on the computer side, do the same thing, right? If I unplug that and then plug it back in, you'll see it pop up down here at the bottom. Run easy suite. Yep. Does the same thing on both machines. Okay, boom, there it is. So um, you can see I've already transferred the files, so we're probably not gonna transfer them again, but I'm just gonna show you how it works. So if I go to C drive, I go to program data. Uh, if I go down to, I believe it's Trimble, Trimble data. Man, using TVs for monitors and I got the volume. Yeah, I do. I got the volume cranked up. Man, that's loud this morning. It's too early for that kind of noise. Okay. So if I go into projects and I look, I've got one called field work. That's where I actually stuck it. And if you'll see up here, these are the jobs, um, job file and the related file folder. You want to make sure that you copy the job file and the related file folder uh, because the related file folder, which is this uh, Alabama uh, book doc files, that has all the scan data and stuff in it and all the photographs. If you don't copy both of these together and put them in the same directory, it ain't gonna work for you. So in this case, all I'd have to do is drop and drag it right down here and then I would have it. So um, super easy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go in and fire up Business Center here real quick. So let's just go to new project. We're gonna say US survey feet. I'm gonna say, okay. Now, if you looked at my TBC 101, which I'm falling behind big time, I'm getting some videos out on that. Uh, man, I've just had so much going on. This summer has been so busy for me. I uh, haven't been able to do everything I wanna do. You'll see where you can set up a template and all that other stuff. But what we're gonna do for right now, I'm just gonna get rid of these grid lines because I don't like them. So I've got over here on the other side, I have this uh, already opened up right here with the, uh, you'll see that I've got a book doc video that I'm a director I've created and here's the Alabama book doc job file. So if I just grab that and drop it in, remember what I said about the related file folder, make sure you've got both of them you know, in the same directory so we can read it. So, brings in the job file, then it's gonna bring in the scans and it's gonna colorize all the scans. Um, and then we'll have a nice pretty picture. Okay, so it's colorizing the scans. This is a pretty beefy little laptop I've got. It's a uh, Origin um, i9 processor, so it's kinda, kinda healthy. So one thing I really recommend, if you're gonna spend the money on SX10 or any scanning, whatever tool it is, sensor, uh, I highly recommend you spend some money on your computer. Um, don't be afraid to spend five, ten thousand dollars on a computer when you just spent sixty thousand dollars in hardware. I'm, I'm telling you, um, you will be much happier at the end of the day. Okay, so it came in. As you can see, just kind of give you guys a little rundown of what was happening. So it was raining. It was really, really kind of nasty day. We tried using the Alabama uh, core station and we just couldn't get any residuals. It just didn't want to work. So we set up a base station that on, on a control point that the surveyor had out there, which is point number one. Then what we did was um, we set up over here at point number 100, that's where we started. So I did integrated surveying. So I used that base station to shoot in these two points right here. Um, I think it was 101, 102. So I did integrate it on that to get a state plane position on my uh, SX-10 where we started at. Once we did that and we had um, orientation, location with our SX-10, then we turned around and took the two poles with the prisms on them and we stacked them. Normally I like to use three or four. When you're doing a resection, if you use just two points, you're kind of nailed down on your geometry at about 90 degrees. Anything above or below 90 degrees, you start introducing some air into your solution. Um, so I was wanting to be very careful about that. So what we ended up doing, um, you can see we've got a point 107 over here on the other side. Uh, uh, this is a canal, by the way, in here. Let me, uh, let me see if I can log into the, so let's see what we've got. 
it's trying to load the street map so you can kind of see what's going on there. But let's go in and load. Uh, if you've got a Trimble Connect account, you can use this. You can use this to get your background map. So if I go to Unnamed, I go to Properties, Trimble Map View, Digital Globe, get rid of that. So it's going to bring in an aerial photograph. So you guys can kind of see, use this Digital Globe, which I, uh, I don't know, it's not the greatest. Um, imagery I don't think I think we could have done something better but you can see that scanner how far that scanner reached out <laughs> way out here uh, on some of those setups this is a restaurant right here this is a, a canal where they come in and there's a marina in here where they park their boats um, as you can see we were down in Orange Beach so um, you can see we were just off the so if I can zoom out far enough, you can see. It's having to reload every time. You can see that this, we're headed out towards the Gulf out here. Wow, my internet's working slow this morning. Kind of like me. Maybe my internet needs some coffee. Maybe that's what the problem is. Mm. I'm running low on coffee. I may have to go get some more before we get this done. So you can see this is Orange Beach. Um, as you can see right here, this is um, this is the Gulf out here. So this is the area we're working on. So uh, for an Arkansas boy, it's kind of cool being down there. You know, elevations are like five foot, stuff like that. It's kind of weird. And my whole career. In Arkansas, you know, elevations run four or five hundred all the way up to twelve, fifteen hundred up in northwest Arkansas. So uh, it's weird when I put five footers or two foot for an elevation. But anyways, I just want to show you where that site was at, so you kind of got an idea of what we're looking at. So this is the area. So let's turn this map off. Right down here at the bottom, I click that. Map goes away. Okay, so this is the area of interest right here. This is the 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 boat lift that they believe was built in the wrong place. So let's go into a 3D view real quick and I'll show you what's going on. So you super surveyors out there, I'm sure you can figure out how all this works, right? So we've got, if we look, supposedly, let me spin this thing around. Supposedly, one of these posts, I don't remember which one it was, is the original post. And then, um, let's look at this in, I like to use, I'm not big, big on color. Um, I like color coded intensity so I can really see it. So as you can see, here's these posts right here. These posts are supposed to be the boundary line for, um, for this thing. now. Supposedly, one of these posts, and I really don't remember which one he told me, one of these posts is the original and the other two were replaced during construction. So, I can't remember, it might have been this post was the original post, I'm not sure. But anyways, there was some talk about coming off of these posts here to try to figure out where the exact boundary was over here. It's kind of kind of crazy. I'm glad I'm not the surveyor that's having to figure this out because I'm sure it's a pain in the butt. But as you can see, there's the lift, there's the post. So supposedly he had 16 foot to build in. And um, I'm thinking this thing is like 18 foot wide, something like that. Um, so if I go from, let's say right in there somewhere. Spin that around a little bit so I don't grab another piece of cloud somewhere in there. 17.4 feet across there. The 16 foot is the whole thing, not just at the bottom, right? <coughs> so <clears throat> he's hanging over on each side. So um, real quick, I'll show you what um, what we can do with this. If I go to point cloud, I go to top down view. So uh, just kind of give you an idea, you can go in here to RTK vector, turn off the RTK vector. I can go into total station, turn the total station off. I can go, you saw the little SX10 things here. 
Uh, that's under photo station, so I can turn that off. And then um, if I want to, I can uncheck this disconnect points and my points will go away. So the other thing we need to do is we need to do polygonal framing. I don't, don't want to do a rectangle framing. So if I go into down here at the bottom and I go to polygonal framing and I select this, this, down to here, double click right there at the end. You can see it's selected just that area. Um, I actually have a video on regions. You might want to check that out. I'll try to put a link up the top. Um, so uh, I can say create region. I can say um, bug lift. Okay. So if you look over here at the left under my filter manager, and if you were wondering where the filter manager's at, it's right here under the home tab in this version. Um, so if I turn default off, leave just boat lift on, you can see I've got all that right there. So let's look here. I can click on in the cloud and use the middle wheel, the middle mouse button, it'll turn around that way. I'm gonna cleanse it up a little bit. So if we wanted to, there again, we could go in. I could get rid of all this trash in here. Double click. I can go up to um, under point clouds and I can go add to region. And I can say add that to default, which is turned off. So it's gonna make it disappear. So that made that disappear right there. So I thought this was a cool data set for you guys to uh, take a look at. Um, you know, I could go in here and clean all this up. Uh, I can use a cutting plane. I don't want to get too crazy with this showing you guys, but let me go into plane manager and show you real quick. If I was to draw this, so I wanted to draw where the pilings and stuff were at, I'd go new, I'd give it a name, whatever, perpendicular to elevation axis. I'm going to select this. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to go down here like this is like the platform, it was level with the water pretty much. I'm gonna use this as my vertical plane. So I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna close that. Then you wanna go into plane manager. There again, I've got a video on cutting planes. I probably need to update it, but uh, I've got that as well. So uh, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna go to uh, cutting plane view. So it's going to be a split screen. So uh, if you're like me, I like running two different um, monitors. So you can go into a float view right here and you can take this bottom piece and float it over to the other screen, which makes it, um, I'll just show you. See, once it's in this float mode, you can't see it, but I'll make it leave. I just put it on the other screen, bring it back. Okay, so um, if we were to look at this, so you can see where my plane's at down here. Okay, so I picked that um, that walkway down there. So you can see there's my walkway right there. So let's say I went up uh, one foot. Enter, boom. So I go up one foot, now you can start seeing this. Thing. I don't know what is going on with this thing. I don't know why it does that to me, but it just drives me nuts. It doesn't interfere with anything, it's just in my way. Um, so I can go in here if I want to, and I go up here to CAD, and I can say circle, three point circle. This is why you need it on the other screen. Um, where you go? There it is. So I can do a three point circle in here. Um, so if I go to point one, see this is a problem having a float view on the same screen that I've got this on. Um, Works better when I put it on the other screen. So, um, let's see if it'll let me. Let me just close this. Let me go back into point clouds because that is going to drive me nuts. Cutting point view. So, anyways, here we are. This this works a little bit better. So, if I go point one over here on the right on my circle, and I go click click, click, you can see it created a circle in there. I'll probably need to go in here, like I'm not real crazy about that circle. So if I do it undo, and I go in here and look. Also, you've got snaps that you can use. 
So uh, I can do point, endpoint, free. I'm just going to say point. So I can also change the thickness of this thing. So if I said 0 0.05 on the thickness, and then I go down and look. So back to my point 0.1, you got to click back in that again, and I say I want to use that point. Maybe that point. Okay, so that that looked pretty good. I'll, I can go with that. So uh, let's say that, and that's at one foot off the water, right? So let me uh, let me do this and show you. If I go in and I turn my scans off, you're going to see that. So at that point, I can go in and do whatever I want to, as far as um, going in and and creating a point in the center of that, you know, or, or whatever I need to do. But that gives me something to measure from. So that's how you use the scanning stuff to actually um, create this. Because this, to me, the SX10 just changes everything. Because look at what I have here to work with. So I scan this out in the field, but look at the, the amount of information. I don't have to create a 3D model. If I wanted to, I could. I could go in here using those circles and do some other stuff in the cutting plane, take that DWG to Civil 3D, and I could actually create a 3D model if I wanted to. But as a surveyor, that's not what I need. What I need to know is, I need to know where these things are at. So let me show you something real quick. I know this video is getting a little bit long, but um, if I go back to cutting plane, and this is where, to me, the, the level of data that I get, the information I get is so powerful because this is going to court. So if you're sitting in court and you go, okay, well, if you look at this thing at, um, let's say 15 foot. So at 15 foot, we don't have a piling. But if I go down to, let's say 14.5, now it looks like I'm, at, I'm about at the top, just almost at the top of the pilings. Let's go down to 14. 14 looks like I'm about at the top of the piling. Okay, so I could go in and measure. I could actually go in and over here and I could actually click up here somewhere and I can see, whoops. I think I got it flipped upside down now. Well, that's, there we, wait a minute. Yep, because I got my plane all the way up top. So uh, if I was to go in here and look, I could go in somewhere in here and I could go to my measure tool and I could say measure point. And I could say, measure me a point right there. And you'd see it 15.57 is the Z value. Now we are mean sea level. So um, you'd have to figure out what that offset is, right? Or you could set your cutting plane. If you knew where zero was at, you could set your cutting plane at zero and you could work off that. And you could see exactly the height that you want to go. But since I didn't do that, let's do this real quick. Um, let's go back to CAD, circle three point, click in there under point one. Um, and this is the one we're working on. So there again, we got a 500s cutting plane we got going on. So if we look at this post and I click there, there, and this post looks weird up here, right there. Okay. So, Let's uh, get rid of the cutting plane view. Let's go back and look. And if we did a, um, if I go to point clouds and I say top down view, here's my top down view right there. Now look at that post. That post is not going straight, right? So if I, I needed to show this in court and, and I needed to show that first of all, that the post isn't uh, vertical, uh, that it does have a twist to it. This would be a great way to do it because now I've got these two circles right here and I can actually take these. All I have to do is select these. Um, and well, if I can select them, hold down your shift or control shift. So I hold down the shift. I select both of them. Now, if I want to, I'd go to home. I can go to export. Under export, I could say DD, DWG exporter. So I could create this as a, all these lines that I've created as a DWG and then send these out to AutoCAD. So um, 
Wow, I've made this video super long. That wasn't my intention. I just kind of want to show you guys how this stuff works. Um, so um, just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, apologize, looks like it got a little lengthy on me. Um, like and subscribe. Uh, I may try to throw this data set up uh, on my Google Drive or Dropbox or something so you guys can uh, access it. So you can uh, you can play with this as well. So anyways, guys, love you. Be careful. Take care of yourself. Don't forget your mask. I'm so fed up with the mask thing. Anyways, um, guys, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. God bless. Take care.